So after the excitement of the drums, I would like to start my presentation with something completely different. So let's have a moment of gratitude together. So I want you, all of you to close your eyes, put your hands on your lap, take three deep breaths, inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. And let's be grateful to all the beautiful things that the universe is giving us. Let's be grateful to the signs and technology we have around us. Computers, mobile, the internet, social media. Let's be grateful to drinking water, to even the luxury of having a shower. They are all simple things, but they are not given. Let's be grateful to our Mother Earth, who gives us the water through rain, through snow, in our rivers, in our lakes, in our oceans. And let's be grateful to nature in general, to the animals, to the plants and the trees who give us oxygen. Let's be grateful to the vegetables and the fruits that we can eat. Let's be grateful to our families, our children, our friends and communities. And let's be grateful to our ancestors who have been here for thousands of years, given us our genetic code that we have today, full of experience and knowledge. Without them, we would not be here. Let's be grateful also to all the people in this room, to the organizers of this conference who make this happen. And most of all, last but not least, let's be grateful to ourselves. Keep your eyes closed, please, all the new ones coming in. Close your eyes. Let's be grateful to ourselves. Let's be grateful to our bodies who carry us every day to new destinations. Let's be grateful to all the millions of body cells that are working continuously to keep our body healthy. Let's be grateful to our bones, to our muscles, to our organs, to our lungs to breathe, to our heart, the engine of our body. Let's be grateful to our brain, who is orchestrating all our movements, and also who gives us awareness and consciousness. Let's be grateful to our eyes, to see the beauty of this world. Let's be grateful to our ears, to hear the beauty of the natural sounds in nature and the beautiful music around us. Let's be grateful to our nose, to sense and smell all the beautiful smells out there. And let's be grateful to our lips and our mouth with whom we can speak and sing and taste and kiss. Now hold the hands of the person next to you. Keep your eyes closed. Hold the hands of the person next to you. Yes. Keep your eyes closed and feel the energy in this room. All of you people working in the water industry as water professionals, working hard every day consciously to provide pure and clean drinking water and sanitation systems to billions of people on this planet. Feel the energy in this room. Feel the positive energy of what we can achieve, what you can do as human beings all together to create a better world. Now you can open your eyes, look to the person next to you, and tell them how wonderful it is that they are alive. <laughs> now how does that feel? Feels good, no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so feeling is something we're going to need more and more in the future. Yeah, because as we're moving in this age of technology, with machines doing most of the work that we have been used doing, you know, we need to go back to our feelings and our true human capacities of how it's going to be to live in this world in the future. Yeah, with machines, how are we going to cope with machines and how are we going to reinvent ourselves to live in an entirely different world when the machines will be doing that world. 
that work. So yeah, I have been talking most of the last years on how technology is impacting business and society. But the last year, I've been mainly talking on the age of consciousness. Because there's this new stream of consciousness going on in the world, especially with the new generation, that is questioning everything that has been done. And also technology challenges everything that we have been doing. It challenges all our current systems. Yeah, we need to rethink everything. The old industrial system that started with the age of Descartes 400 years ago, the rational thinking, will also have a different side. And we will have to go back to more human thinking and being yeah, to create happy lives, to create good communities, and to preserve our planet, most of all. Because the industrial society is doing great things, but also you know, we see the backside a bit of it, as I'm going to show you. So in the upcoming 20 years, we can solve world hunger. We can stop and reverse global warming. We can slow down or cure major diseases. We can provide clean water to everyone at a low cost. And we can solve the energy problem and switch to sustainable economies for everyone. But what we will need is conscious leadership for everyone. Yeah, to become more responsible in everything we do, in all the actions that we all do day to day. Because we have a lot of addictions. Yeah, we have a lot of assumptions. Yeah, maybe that all wrong in this new age that we need to revisit. We need to look at them again. If you look at our industrial society and the consumer society, what it has produced is a lot of dopamine addiction. Dopamine is this you know, personal satisfier in our brain that gives us quick fixes. Yeah, we are addicted to food. We are addicted to social media. We can order anything with the push of a button on our mobile phone. We are addicted to knowledge and infotainment. We are addicted to entertainment. Yeah, games and binge watching on Netflix. So all this is to actually satisfy our dopamine. But we need to move to more serotonin-driven societies. Serotonin is the chemical in our brain that makes us happy yeah, on a long-term basis. Serotonin we get through learning, through being outdoors, being in nature, to interact with other people, to play with family members and friends, like children do. Yeah. Children have a natural being of serotonin-driven being, actually. Yeah, so you, you don't need to question children. They are always playing. They're always happy. They're always loving. They're always empathic. So we need to move more towards this type of societies. As Einstein used to say, the world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. And it cannot be changed without changing our thinking. So we need to change our entire thinking. So let's have a look at the state of water today. As the president of the IWA already mentioned, 2.1 billion people lack access to safety managed water services. 4.5 billion people are denied the dignity of sanitation. 80% of wastewater flows back into the ecosystem without being treated or reused. 80%. 1.7 billion people live in areas where groundwater resources and groundwater dependent ecosystems are under threat. And by 2030, the world faces a 40% gap between water supply and demand. In addition to water scarcity impacts, the world also faces the impacts from flooding, as we see now with uh, the hurricanes, and poor water quality. So the challenges you have are huge. Yeah, we are on an inflection point of like, what can we manage? And so we need to change our th thinking and also use technology for the good to improve our systems. If you look at other uh, outbursts of the industrial society, look at the plastic pollution. There's more than 300 million tons of plastic produced every year. Only 9% gets recycled. The 91% goes back into the air, our soils and our waters. Yeah, and most of it, the producers are not responsible yeah, for that waste. We are living a fast and easy lifestyle yeah, where waste is like normal. Everything we buy is plastic. Everything we use is plastic. So we need to think 
on the source of the problem yeah, and change the source of the problem. Coca-Cola alone produces 100 billion bottles per year. That's one-fifth of the global production. Yeah, so why can't we move to all have drinking water? Good, clean drinking water. Why is it that we all buy plastic bottles who are transported over the country in different regions, producing CO2 levels by the diesel engines and the trucks? Yeah? We should have advertising for clean, good drinking water instead of plastic used. So let's take notion of that. Our oceans are polluted by all these massive tankers, container ships, because all the goods produced in Asia and China have to go back to Europe and US somehow. But look at all the um, dark areas on this slide of like how bad it is. Yeah, there's thousands of fishes dying every year species yeah, that we will never see again already with the pollution we have today. And then there's a new thing that is now newly discovered, which we call microplastics, which are in the oceans, but also our rivers and our lakes. Yeah? Just in the Rhine River in, U in Europe, 191 million microplastics are found per day. Yeah? Those plastics go back in the North Sea. And that's in Europe, where we so-called have the cleanest rivers in Europe. Yeah? So all these microplastics are tiny, tiny, tiny plastics that are actually decomposed by plastics that we produce. And they go back into our food and in our drinking system. So luckily, we have young entrepreneurs, like this young man from Amsterdam, 16 years old, who decided, I'm going to clean up the mess that you left behind. Yeah, so he is cleaning up these specific gyres that you can see you know, all over the world. And they started this year to actually build this huge 600 meter uh, nets actually to capture the plastic in these gyres and then recycle that plastic. So it's estimated that they can clean up 90% of the uh, pollution in the oceans by 2040. Yeah, the systems are autonomous, they have new energy, they're totally provided by solar energy, and they are scalable. But it takes a 16-year-old, yeah, a child, yeah, or a young person to say, I'm going to clean up the mess that you left behind. That's the new responsibility, that's the new generation we need to be thankful for. Uh, Self-driving ships are also the new way. This one is from Yara, which is a Norwegian chemical brand who is creating this solar and battery power container ship, which will reduce the transport of 40,000 trucks every year. Also Rolls-Royce and lots of other companies are now building self-driving ships. But we need to replace all these old container ships that have bunker fuel, which is a thousand times more polluting than cars or anything else, very quickly. There is no time to waste. Look at this picture. Isn't it beautiful? This is Mother Nature. Yeah? And I am so happy to hear also that in Tokyo and Japan, they just passed the bill to reduce microplastics in natural resource water. Yeah, it's probably the first or one of the first in the world to do that. So it's an example that everybody needs to follow. We need to keep our waters clean. And the thing is that we need to stop thinking silo thinking. Everybody's thinking in his own sector, silo, this is not my sector, this is not mine, I'm just focusing on this. But with internet and with connectivity and data, everything becomes connected. But if you know, another industry is polluting you know, our drinking water, it's going to take you more, it's going to cost you more to filter that same water to bring it to your customers. So you need to be more responsible also to other sectors. We all need to take more responsibility. The new trend is bioplastics. Currently, there's only 1% in the world that is bioplastics, which is uh, completely composed by organic elements. But the production of normal plastic is estimated to grow 20% in the next five years. Yeah. A lot faster than this. So we need to really tackle the source of the problem. Yeah, we can produce new things, but we need to stop the source. 
and move towards this type of innovations. This is an innovation for a startup from a startup from London, which is actually taking drinking water in a type of ball made by seaweed so you can carry it with you. Yeah? The goal for all of us is that we have clean drinking water so we don't need to you know, use plastic any longer. But for mobile solutions, this is a great solution. And there's going to come more of these solutions on the market. So exponential technology trends impacting water. You all heard about exponential technology trends. They have been impacting everything. Yeah. All sectors, from publishing to media, to music, to banking, to finance, manufacturing, process industry, health industry, and now also the water industry. But it's not longer about disruption. Yeah? Disruption is these technology companies that come in your market and take new value away and bring it to Silicon Valley. Yeah? The new motto is about construction together. Yeah? Working together with these startups to bring innovation and new solutions in your area. Let's look at Internet of Things and water. This is a slide from a startup uh, in Spain called Libelium, and they produce the sensors. So have a look at all the sensors, you know, that we can now, all the things that we can measure data from, from air pollution to forest detection, yeah? Quality of shipment conditions, smartphone detection, radiation levels, electromagnetic levels, tra traffic congestion, smart roads, smart lightning, water leakages, waste management, water quality. All this we can now do with sensors and data. In your industry, if we connect sensors to your systems or ecosystem, yeah, we can see that all the different things that we can start measuring yeah, in the pipes, up to the consumer, yeah, up to energy sources and all that by connecting everything. So Internet of Things is one of the most important technologies. If you look at agriculture now, we can measure heat, we can measure humidity, we can measure soil quality with Internet of Things, which you can see on this slide. Yeah? But again here, agricultural industry is one of the biggest pollution, polluters yeah, of our soils. So if that soils and water is used back in our cycles or drinking cycles, we need to be aware yeah, of how we're going to filter that and what's the cost of all those filtering. This is a slide from General Electric, which I use because it really explains well the ecosystem of like everything that can be connected from water resources, water treatment, water collection and storage, water distribution towards your customers, water treatment and disposal, and water reuse. The full cycle to optimize, analyze, visualize, and integrate is in there. And there's lots of companies are working on these areas. I'm sure there's a lot of you here in this audience too. So this is Sweet Sense, which is a startup who is actually providing um, low energy uh, sensors in the uh, developing nations like in Africa where they actually test the quality of the water yeah, that can be drunk by people. It's a very low cost and efficient system yeah, and there's lots of startups working in those areas. If you look at the cities of the future, this is a design for Paris 2050 where we see more vertical scrapers, yeah, vertical farming as we call it, we hardly see any cars. We see more green spaces and every transport will be self-driven, whether it's trains, buses or cars. Yeah? But we need to create also more livable spaces in cities. Yeah? Because if you look at most of the cities, they're just concrete. We hardly see any green left, yeah? which is very hard for us human beings to live in such cities. Yeah? Why there's so many burnouts? Why there's so many people suffering yeah? or getting sick very early? because we don't live healthy and we have too much stress. We have intelligent buildings. This is the Edge building in Amsterdam, which is now the most intelligent building in the world. It's fully powered by solar energy. They recuperate rainwater and use it as waste management. But most of all, it's entirely connected. Yeah, you can drive in with your car. The building knows already you're there. Yeah? And you have an app to manage everything. You can manage all your um, Meetings, whether it's a face-to-face -face meeting, whether you need a meeting room, you can change the lightning, you can change the climate, all from your app. 
Yeah? And we will see more and more of these buildings. The Internet of Things will enable that. And we can also see the data yeah, of what is happening in the building. From seeing the data, we can also develop new and better and more efficient ways of working together. Also, smart water is coming to your home. Yeah, we have more and more filters, and we will have more and more connected water that can measure the quality of the water. Artificial intelligence and water. Artificial intelligence is probably the most disruptive technology that will impact any sector. Yeah. We see it already a lot. It's used in entertainment sector, social media, Facebook, Google, all of them use it, Amazon. And um, most of all, what artificial intelligence is doing is once we have all the data, you know, as human beings, we are not capable any longer of analyzing all the data. There's just too much of it. It's produced by our laptops, by our phones, and now by all the sensors. So we need this intelligence to actually take all that data in. So artificial intelligence learns actually what is happening with all that data. And in a later stage or an advanced stage, it can also suggest what to do. So it learns from its mistakes and it can suggest better things. So artificial intelligence is going to revolutionize every sector, especially yours also. Just imagine that all this data on water quality, pipelines, and everything is connected, and you have artificial intelligence that can tell you actually what is happening or what you can do better. So one of the important things is, this is a, the ASI LOMAR AI principles from the Institute of the Future. Yeah, because now there's a lot of AI that is developed that's also what we call bad AI. It's just designed for profit. Yeah? It's just designed to take out value of the system just for a few users or a few companies. So it's very important that we are very aware and ethical about the data. We need always to have human values up front. We need shared benefit and prosperity to our communities. We need ecosystem thinking. You cannot just think in a silo anymore. It's all connected. And we also need to be responsible for that data. And who creates that data? If you look at blockchain, the other technology that's going to be impacting your sector, blockchain is like a layer on trust of trust that we put on top of the internet. Yeah, because we decentralize all decisions. Every decision is taken by a different node. Yeah. So we don't have the centralized power any longer, which creates a more de democratic and transparent system. So where well, blockchain can be used for improved water resource management, decentralized water reuse systems, basin level insights to manage water risks, also provide clean water to everyone with low cost and advanced materials for producing new sources of water, water and sanitation in smart cities. So an example here is in the city of Fremantle in Australia, where they started already, uh, it's called the Power Ledger, Ledger, the startup, who actually create a blockchain together with uh, energy partners, electricity partners, to create an entire energy and water distribution system with blockchain in the middle to actually follow everything and manage everything. You will see more and more of that. Another example is WaterChain, which is a startup who actually creates cryptocurrencies system to invest into new blockchain projects, yeah? specifically with water. Yeah? And having smart contracts in between, so we reduce all the impact of administration and checkups. Voice technology is digital assistance. How many of you have seen the, the demo from Google? That somebody, you know, the machine can call the hairdresser or can call it a restaurant. Yeah, so I don't have it here. But voice technology has become so good now that we cannot recognize any longer whether the voice is coming from a human or from a robot. So we will have more and more technologies yeah, and phone calls coming from robots. We also have digital assistants already that look so good yeah, visually. If you also activate the camera, I'll also be able to see your facial expressions. Thank you for granting access to your camera. I see you are interested in AutoCAD, including specialized tool sets. Are you a current user of AutoCAD? Yes, I am. 
Thank you for being an Autodesk customer. So this is a virtual character entirely created by developers. Yeah. So we have already virtual uh, stores on the internet, on Instagram and all that, that young people think that they are real, but they are created by agencies. And they pose with stars, they go to concerts, they create an imaginary virtual life. So we will have more and more of those. But they will be very useful also in customer connection and experience. If you talk about new materials, graphene and water, CSRO is a startup in Australia who created this graphene filter. You can just take out you know, a bucket of seawater and then put it through the filter and you can just drink the water. Yeah. Here you can see how they do that. It's very early stage for these type of companies. Yeah, graphene was invented just in 2004, also in the University of Manchester and in many universities globally. They have a lot of spin-offs. But what's important is to follow all these startups because they are the innovators. Yeah, and one of them or two of them or three of them, maybe 10 of them, will become very mature companies in this business. And it's true that there's a lot of innovation with graphene also in your sector. Digital transformation in the water sector. If you look at some of the bigger problems, water stress, infrastructure, flooding, quality, workforce, yeah, with digital transformation, we can actually connect all those and improve all the services. Yeah? Here you can see some of them by using artificial intelligence, robotics, machine learning, drones-based uh, inspection, smart sensors, blockchain, and then also cognitive-based situational intelligence yeah, for all the services that you have here. So all these services can improve lots of your business and they will become very important. Very important is also the customer experience. Yeah? The young generation and people like to know what is happening. So if you can provide them a clean and good experience, yeah, you will make good customers for you. The winners of today, of all these companies that you hear about all the time, Uber, Airbnb, it's because they have a great customer experience. They make everything easy and fluid and nicely designed. Yeah, so this is also important. You can have back office applications, but towards your customer, it's very important that you have good experience. Let's look at some of the examples in innovation with water. iDrop is a startup that's actually working in Africa also with a nanotechnology filter yeah, to provide drinking water. This startup comes out of uh, San Francisco and they provide a membrane that collects actually 95% of the sewage that they distribute also in developing countries specifically for women and, and children and girls that don't have access to uh, clean sanitation. This startup, uh, Utilis, is detecting water leakages through satellite. Yeah. I think there's billions of liters of water wasted every year just in the pipelines, and these guys have a solution for it. WaterGen is a startup who creates water out of air. Yeah. Follow this space because there's lots of startups working in this area. Yeah, in any type of area, you can create water out of air, whether it's the desert or whether it's in humid areas. Tap water, this is one of my favorites. It's from my friend Magnus Jörn in uh, Barcelona. So they create a filter that actually creates clean water. But this is not new, of course. But what they do is in the next version, they will be able to measure the quality of the water. Yeah? Because you can have great quality in the pipelines, but sometimes in old buildings, you know, the water can get infected again. So they provide solutions for that. And then imagine that you, connect, you can connect all that data to provide better quality of water everywhere. Yeah, so these startups are doing very important work. Also, they tell you like how many bottles you know, of plastic you have saved. So you can keep track of actually how you are doing good and contributing to creating a better world. And also the water project, sometimes you don't need big technology to bring big innovations. These guys are just creating wells everywhere in developing countries. Yeah, and helping people. For my birthday, for example, I don't want any uh, presents. I just create an action on uh, the water project and my friends can donate and that money goes to the water project to help some others. Yeah, do something different for your birthday. 
Conscious leadership and water. So how do we become conscious? Yeah. It all starts with our education. Yeah. Our education system is no longer fit for the future that we are facing. If you know that knowledge is now transferred to machines, you can ask anything to Google or Amazon or any of these companies and you will get an answer. There is AI already in Cambridge that can do the test of the best MBA or best degree and it does better than humans. So what's the point of studying all that knowledge? What's the point of studying the books and being tested on it? There's no point any longer. So we need to rethink entirely how we learn and how we educate ourselves yeah, for a different future. So in human works design, we have nine principles of future of learning that we created. So what do we do? We do lots of workshops with children and where we bring meaning and passion. Yeah, exponential learning. We need to stop thinking that we know it all. Yeah, instead we need to think how to learn it all. Yeah, we need to become continuous learner, lifetime learners. Also creative and authentic learning is very important. Yeah, creativity is probably the most important asset yeah, as human beings that we have, that computers cannot do. Communal learning, working in a community is very important. The elderly have so much knowledge, why are they not implicated in the education system? We can learn from our family, from friends, from elderlies. Personalized learning, with the internet we can learn a lot on a personal level. Anything I want to learn now, I can get it. Yeah. Learning by doing. Yeah like we do with the startups. Yeah, just do it, learn from it. Children, they can fall 30 times, they still get up with a smile, and they will continue learning. Do that with an adult, after two or three times, he doesn't get up any longer. This is a reality. Assessment as learning. Yeah, do you hire people and you assess them on what they know and what they can do in the company, or the ability also to learn and grow into your company. And then empowerment, and role model learning, you know, listening to the children. We do workshops where the children actually come up with the best ideas. We do the same with the parents, and the parents get stuck while they have to develop things because they think about competition, it has to be perfect, they are framed already in the box, while children, they can just create any new world in one hour and then create another one in another hour. Yeah, building future teams is all about values, trust and engagement. All the things that computers cannot do. Cultural transformation, continuous learning, defining new role skills and capabilities for this new world, and then also start using new methodologies like design thinking and Socratic design. Most importantly, you have to think as an ecosystem. You are all in a position where you have lots of partners around you, but you have to extend that. Yeah, if you just look at this slide, you know, you have to work together with governments, you know, local, globally, investors, NGOs, multinationals. Here are startup incubators and accelerators. These are the partners you need to have. You need to work together with all these new ideas to know what can be your next products and services. And then also institutions and academic institutions. So how we do that is we have, we use the startup canvas model. How many of you know the startup canvas model? It's a model that is often used or mainly used by startups actually to define their products and services. But what we add to that, we add a human layer. Yeah? So for example, imagine that your value, we always start with human values first. Yeah? Imagine that the value is water, clean water or clean drinking water or clean wastewater, whatever. So, and then we mix it or we target it to children first. Yeah, because children are the essence of our life. They are also our future. And then we bring in new economies, maker economy, on-demand, circular, experience economy, and gig economy, all these new economies that are rising every year. Value propositions yeah, for your company and ecosystem. Yeah? And then partnerships for exponential business. Think how the ecosystem map that I just showed you, how you can partner with all these people, and how you can use exponential technologies, of which I named a few, Internet of Things, Artificial Intelligence, Blockchain, can, use, can be used in your area. And then with new KPIs, measure impact, you know, the quality of water, sustainability, recycling, and all that. 
And then also learning programs and culture design. And we use the UN Sustainable Development Goals in there to make sure that it's very social and sustainable. So if you look at the Maslow pyramid of self-actualization, you know, robots and machines are here, basically. They do mainly all this work here. But everything that's here, esteem, self-actualization, actualization of consciousness, are truly human traits yeah, that computers cannot do. So I foresee that a new economy is going to be built on all those. We're going to see more and more human-to-human -human type of services. And this slide here from Tony Robbins, the number one coach in the world, is also, this is called the pyramid of wealth. But most of the people are here in finances, career, and mission, and time. And we all forget about physical body, being fit, being healthy. We forget about emotions and meaning. What do we do? Do we have a vision? Do we have a mission? Do we have a passion? And then our relationships. And this is why most of the people burn out. Because everybody's focused here and they forget about the bottom line. Yeah? If we don't have this, we cannot achieve this and even later contribution and spirituality. So we need to listen more to our children. They are the future. Yeah? A children first world design, we call it also. And I want to close my presentation with this fable from an Indian, yeah, which is from Joseph Campbell. There were three beings who were drinking from a river. One was a god and he drank ambrosia. One was a man and he drank water. And then one was a demon and he drank filth. So what you get is a function of your own consciousness. Thank you very much.